discovery devastating. The body of five-year-old A.J. Friend, his own parents, the accused killers. Yeah, we have live team coverage of all the developments, including what led police to A.J.'s body. We begin with CBS 2's Suzanne Lamignot, live at the Crystal Lake Police Department headquarters. Suzanne, good afternoon. And good afternoon, Brad and Erica. Police are telling us that an analysis of cell phone records led to both parents being charged in their own son's death. It was last Thursday when Andrew Friend Sr. called 911 and calmly told the dispatcher his five-year-old son was missing. Have you checked everywhere, like under tables or uh, in closets? The closets, the basement, the garage, everywhere. Today, six days later, the fate of five-year-old Andrew, A.J. Friend Jr. was revealed by Crystal Lake Police. It is with heavy heart that the Crystal Lake Police Department reports that we've located what we believe to be the body of Andrew A.J. Friend. Police have charged A.J.'s father and mother, Joanne Cunningham, with their son's death and disappearance. They are both charged with first-degree murder, aggravated battery, aggravated domestic battery, and failure to report a missing or child death. Andrew Friend faces an additional charge, concealment of a homicidal death. Police say a forensic analysis of cell phone information led to the charges. Once presented with the evidence obtained by investigators, both Joanne and Andrew Sr. provided information that ultimately led to the recovery, what we believe is the recovery, of deceased subject AJ. The five-year-old was found in a shallow grave wrapped in plastic in a wooded area in Woodstock. To AJ. We know you're at peace playing in heaven's playground and are happy you no longer have to suffer. Now how AJ died still isn't known. His autopsy is set for tomorrow morning. We're live at the Crystal Lake Police Department. Suzanne Lemigneau, CBS 2 News. AJ lived in Crystal Lake. To give you a better idea of where his body was found, it is about eight miles west of the family's home in a remote field off Dean Road near the Hinnon Conservation Area in McHenry County. And that is where CBS 2's Tim McNicholas is. He's been there all day as investigators search for evidence. Tim, good afternoon. Yeah, good afternoon, Brad and Erica. Investigators spent more than nine hours in this rural area today. They just drove off about 20 minutes ago. A man then pulled up in a truck and closed the gate. Police say this is private property. In a very intense morning, so. Amy Lubke says she woke up this morning to the sound of a helicopter. Put a drone up in here. Investigators later sent a drone over this area just down the street from Lubke's home. But it's not the noise that bothers her. It's disgusting. It's the fact that investigators found five-year-old AJ in a shallow grave wrapped in plastic. I have a five-year-old daughter as well, and it's, it's just gross because... It's just unexplainable, you know, like knowing that that is just happens right here in your front yard. Lubke says she's lived here for two years and she rarely sees anyone in the area where police search today. She says she never even noticed this pathway until she saw a truck that was for some reason parked in the area about a week and a half ago. I hope they find out, you know, how and why this field particularly was where his body was found because again, like you can't see that path off the road. There's absolutely no lighting whatsoever. A man who says his daughter lives next to this property said off camera that a detective asked him early this morning if he knows who owns this land. That man and Lubke both tell CBS2 they don't know the owner. I just pray that that kid, he didn't suffer. Now, we are working to find out uh, what happened to A.J. here, exactly what happened to him and how long he was here. This is a story that has broken hearts across McHenry County. In fact, today, several people from the area showed up on this road just trying to figure out exactly what was going on. Live in McHenry County, Tim McNicholas, CBS 2 News.